morning. It is Tuesday. As you can look out, we are driving. This is uh, April 24th. We're in Frisco, Texas. And we are headed to another delivery. Got my wife driving us over here. I'm sitting here in the passenger seat. Um, but we are headed to John Grimes house um, and just really excited about this delivery um, but we're just just a few minutes out from arriving at his house so really excited about this kind of it's a beautiful day in North Texas we're pulling into a subdivision gonna be coming up to his house kind of neat he doesn't know we're coming so it's gonna be a surprise John's getting ready to turn 40 years old this week. So we've got some of his family gonna be meeting us. Right, we kind of scoped it out a little bit last night when we got to town. So we knew where we were going. And say hello to Mr. John. John here? Let's see. John, my name is Chris Peltz. Hey, I know you. You do know me, don't you? I do. How are you? I'm doing well. Wonderful. My wife, Michelle, is back here. Hi, nice Hi to Michelle. See you. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. You want to do a little grilling? What are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> just came to say hi. Brad? Mm -hmm. Is Brad here? Yeah, he is. Brad. Yeah? I just imagined I'm just mysteriously here. Just mysteriously here? <laughs> came a long way to say hi. You want to, didn't I? Yeah. You want to do some grilling today? I do. Well, yeah, come on in. That sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah, man. Come on in, man. All right. Just uh, <laughs> straight ahead. A few folks going to be showing up in a little bit it's, uh, from Premier. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get you set up. How long has this been in the works? Great. A while. Really? Yeah. A while. How long have you been here? Uh, last night. You're in Missouri, right? Yeah. Yeah. We got here last night. How many miles did you drive to get here, Chris? Um, and Michelle? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, just over 400. Just for this? Just yeah. to see this guy over Yeah, there. just, yeah. Yeah. Just for this. That's so. quite a drive. <laughs> <laughs> we got in last night. And we come and scoped out your house. And, uh, oh, I saw something weird. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this sense. I told her, don't worry about stopping. He's not going to see. Right. <laughs> so. This is true. Brad has been doing all of this. Yeah, Chris, I, I had talked, I had spoken with you, I think it was back in, I'll have to look at, um, thank you, John. Thank you. I, I'll have to look at back on my yeah. Facebook, but I think it was October. I think, yeah, it, it was, I know it was last year sometime. Um, Grande Mocha, right? That's you, Chris? Yes, sir, Mocha. All right, here you go. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first time I contacted you, what was that? Was that? Yes, thank you. Last summer, maybe? Yeah, I think it was last summer. What are we uh, grilling today? At least some ribs. At least. At least. I like the way that sounds. We'll do uh, we'll do some baby back ribs. Depending on time and room, uh, whether we do something on the grill or inside even, we'll do some um, some garlic potatoes. Hopefully you guys aren't opposed to garlic. No, we like garlic. But we'll go we'll go through everything we brought for you and get everything set up and walk you through all that. Chris but, Pelt in my living room. <laughs> Well, that that's nothing special, but yes, I am here. Did you know anything about, I mean, I knew you were aware of it possibly happening in the future sometime, but did you have any clue that this was happening? No. Because um, I was thinking you were onto us. And Dad's right. already aware of this. This has kind of been on the calendar for about two weeks, right? Officially. Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Awesome. Cody. Chris Peltz. Nice to meet you. Good to meet nice you to meet as you. well. Appreciate you guys. No problem. Hello. Howdy, sir. I'm Jim. Chris Peltz. Nice to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. 
You, with Premier? Yes. Awesome. Man, I appreciate you guys so much. Sure. Hey, Brad. Nice Brad, John. Hey, John. And John. Hey, John. John is who we're doing yeah. the delivery for. Cool. Good to yeah. see you, John. So this is Jim from uh, from Premier. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we're setting, uh, setting John up with his first big green egg and getting get him ready to start grilling good yeah it's that's gonna, awesome yeah it's gonna be great you'll love it can't go wrong uh, cooking on an egg egg is one of the favorites for sure so. you know one of the reasons we do it for the vision impaired is you know with, with the metal grills they get so hot you burn yourself if you miss the handle and touch something and sure with that egg you know you've got you've got some time if you touch it either it's not as hot or if it's it is really hot it's not going to leave skin behind sure, it sure makes it really safe for the blind and visually impaired so all right, so Jim, yeah, um, you're with Premier uh, Grilling here in, in Frisco. Yes, and um, I know you, you mentioned earlier you do all kinds of other other grills, but uh, you got the you got the big green egg, mm -hmm. of course, which is what we're delivering today. Um, but uh, how long have you been with Premier? Um, I've been working with the company for four years now. Okay, so the company's been around for nine. Um, we started in Frisco. Um, just basically started building outdoor kitchens is how the, the company was started. Okay. Um, we had a, a house uh, down in the old Frisco uh, Main Street area and uh, built some, you know, sample kitchens in the backyard uh, of that house so that people could see what, what, what all we do. Right. Um, and that's kind of how it all started. So from there, um, we opened a retail location in Plano. Um, then we opened a retail location in Frisco. And we just opened our third uh, location in McKinney. So. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, I'm excited to check out uh, the store itself and and look at the, some of the things you've got. But as far as um, you know, Big Green Egg. I mean, you guys uh, carry pretty much everything they offer. Yes, uh, all the accessories, everything that the, you know you can get for your Big Green Egg. We definitely carry that. But I think what really kind of sets us apart is everyone in the in the company cooks. Right. So that's like the first question that you're asked if you if you want to work for the company is what was the last thing you cooked? Okay. Um, and because we're serious about cooking and um, all our employees are required to cook uh, their lunch on the grill um, every every day that they work, just so that we know the the product. I appreciate uh, you guys partnering with us for sure. this for this delivery and yeah, um, this has just been you know uh, with our cause trying to deliver uh, and make make something that we're all passionate about you know accessible for blind and visually impaired and, and let folks know that they can do this uh, you know regardless of their their situation if they're if they really want to and are interested in, in following this type of passion that uh, that it's possible so we're gonna get to the back and see what uh, is going on with John and Sounds awesome. um, get things set up for him and, and ready to cook thanks okay. again yeah. man good to meet we're, you yeah good to meet good you too. so we're gonna make sure John that you're familiar with all the parts of the egg we're gonna go through that um, with you so you know uh, you know before we get it fired up you know all the parts and then later when you need to get things cleaned up um, you know we'll be ready you know ready to go with that so um, let's uh, let's come over here to it so John we're out here on your back patio um, we've got ribs on the egg but one of the things we like to do is just kind of talk about um, kind of what it, you know uh, as much as you're willing to talk about anyway, kind of what happened with you as far as your your blindness, uh, what you can and cannot see, and um, you know, kind of how that how that came about. So if you don't mind, you know, tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> well, what happens pretty easy. Um, what I can and can't see is kind of difficult and sometimes a uh, subjective measurement. But when I was in college in 1998, so 20 years ago. Uh, I became ill with bacterial meningitis. You ever heard of that? Yeah, I have, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, I thought I had the flu, and I went, I took some flu type medicine and went to bed um, on a Thursday night and woke up about uh, eight days later in the hospital. So lots of things happened between uh, me going to sleep and waking up in the hospital, but uh, I had contracted bacterial meningitis, spinal meningitis, um, as an airborne disease that just um, apparently was meant for me. Yeah. <clears throat> and when you woke up, 
was was it pretty immediate apparent with your vision loss? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, because it was pretty obvious that something was different. But I didn't. I don't know that immediately. I didn't have like a awakening, and I was kind of. I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe, maybe, but. I had lots of other, I was laying in a bed in a coma for eight days, so in, in addition to my vision, um, all my muscles and things had atrophied, and I couldn't, I really couldn't do much of anything for myself, um, other than laying in a bed, so, um, sitting up, standing up, um, all those kind of things were, it took a, a while before I could even really do that, so the vision was, I didn't understand it, uh, in fact, the muscle, my eyelids didn't, uh, weren't opening actually. I had to like open my eyelids because the muscles that I don't know just that stuff that happened. So right. Uh, it wasn't until for sure several hours or maybe a day or two that I came to that I had a kind of an understanding or an assessment of what was going on with me. Yeah. But the vision was a pretty big part of it. Right. Yeah. Now, with your vision, you're. Your right eye is completely blind. Yeah. So what happened was the the meningitis that's in the spine, and your and my brain and spine share the same fluid. So the disease is in the spine and the brain fluid, and it caused my brain to swell. And when that happened, it pushed up against my skull and it cut off the circulation to my optic nerves. And the optic nerves are brain cells that don't regenerate themselves once they're damaged or. Um, injured so essentially my uh, swelling on the right side of my over here must have been worse than it was on the left side and um, cut off the circulation to my optic nerve enough where I have zero vision on my right and clinically 23 or 2400 in my left right and more peripheral in your left and it's mostly peripheral so right. in Texas where I live legally blind is 2100 um, and I'm between 23 and 2400, right. so it depends, I guess. Right. Um, yeah. but as far as colors and things, I don't have really have much of an issue. Uh, well, colors are similar. Uh, it's sometimes hard to tell them apart, but really it's, it, it, things are just fuzzy. Um, it's just like you're, just like I'm standing um, further away from something. I. I I can't, I don't drive um, because uh, I, I can't legally drive nor would I really want to because I'm probably getting trouble pretty fast. But I did drive when it happened when I was 19. Mm -hmm. So I did drive for about three years. Right. Um, so I do know that sense of yeah. freedom. Yeah. But I don't anymore. Now, what year in college were you? Sophomore. Sophomore. You finished college though. I did. In spite of this. I did. So I had to learn a totally different way of learning. I was probably a visual learner before, um, so I quickly became a uh, audio learner and absorbed things that way. I, it was in 1998, uh, I had more than one opportunity to learn Braille, um, but I, I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I've taken two stabs at it and I just couldn't really stick with it. Uh, I'm a basically a technology nerd, so without that I think I probably would have a very proficient uh, Braille. Uh, capabilities, but because of uh, technology, even in the late 90s, um, I, I focused on that with the the vision that I had. Without the vision I had, either the, the, the Braille would have been very important. Right, yeah. And so right out of, so right out of college, I mean, you, you went back pretty quick. Yeah, it happened in February. It was when I um, went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I got out of the hospital February, the last day, February 28th. And I came home um, and went through a lot of physical rehabilitation. Uh, I mean, walking and I couldn't swallow, so I had to have thickening agents and all my liquids and different kinds of, I don't know, there was a lot of, a lot of weird things that happened yeah. then with my body. And so uh, I enrolled back in August for this um, fall quarter or fall semester. I, um, I think I enrolled in three classes and ended up, I dropped one and took, finished two. And then the next semester, the next spring semester, I think I took 
two classes again. And then starting with that summer of 99 is when I kind of got things into gear and yeah. finished it up. So I, I did, the last two years of school, I did about three years worth of courses. Right. Um, but it took me that semester, a semester and a half before I could really kind of adjust to a new way of doing a lot of things, um, learning for sure, but transportation and uh, just kind of orientation. Uh, I'd already been to the school, of course, so for almost two years, a year and a half, so I was pretty well oriented visually before, um, so I had a pretty good handle on that, but adjusting to um, the new range was a uh, textbook. Right, sure, yeah. Now, what do you do now as far as work? I'm in the insurance business, um, which is something that my family's been involved in. I think uh, pretty fortunate that I was able to, um, um, I was in the insurance industry right out of college, not with my family directly. Um, and then as um, time transpired, we we opened a, uh, a, a small business and here in our town and yeah. we've been doing that for since about 2003 okay. so my uh, family's just like lots of things in my life my family's pretty integral to everything I do mm -hmm. um, anything so yeah. we, we get along very well and yeah we we do we do okay right we do pretty good yeah and it's um, I know they think a lot of you you know so uh, just from my conversations with with your brother and, and things so I know it's uh, family is important to all of you and you're, you've been married for seven years? Or yes. Seven years now? Okay. You got well, it'll be seven later this year. But later yeah. this year? We'll just okay. call it. Yeah. 20. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it adds up. Right. <laughs> um, and you have three kids now. Three girls. How old are they? Oldest one just turned three, and the middle one is about 19 months, 20 months old, and the youngest one's four months. Wow. Brave man. <laughs> That's, uh, I've been told that. That's I, I believe that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you you've got a birthday coming up this I week. Do. I do. All right. And um, you've been around the big green egg a little bit because of your brother. Yeah. All right. So and and of course Brad, your brother, he's um, he's posted on some of the big green egg groups and on Facebook and things. So I I got to know him a little bit uh, with that, but. Um, he he was watching some videos, from what I understand, on YouTube, and came across Blind Grilling, and told you about us. Um, and so you started watching some of the videos. And I just thought how genius it is, um, and it really gave me the idea that grilling is something I certainly could do um, very well without um, hurting myself or without just being frustrated enough just to not want to do it because it was uh, going to be too difficult. Yeah. And, and you've been around his grill a little bit. With mm -hmm. the, he's got the egg, and so yeah. you've been around that. And, and I've had the, the proceeds of many of his cooks, and they're all yeah. very good. So <laughs> right, right. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, yeah. And so when we showed up this morning, you you, just, you had absolutely no idea. No idea. <laughs> That's great. No idea. Uh, what do you think? Good job covering it up. Yeah, well, what do you think? I, it's incredible. I don't, I don't know... I'm not doing it enough justice right now because I'm still trying to kind of understand the whole <laughs> how things work. But it's, yeah. uh, I mean, um, I was getting up to go to work today and I'm sitting on my back porch with the great uh, Chris Peltz and his wife Michelle and we're cooking ribs. That's right. I can't think of a better way to spend the day. Right. Yeah. It's great. It's great. You know, there was a big adjustment for you, but when you lost your sight, you had not yet met Aaron, your wife. You met her later? Yes, that right? that's correct. Yeah. All right, so when she met you, you had, you had already lost your vision. And so so there really wasn't an adjustment for her so much um, other than, um, you know, how, how did that go? I mean, how did it, did it seem, was there any frustration at first when you guys were first meeting, met, met first dating, you know, with trying to get her to understand what you could and couldn't see? I think... One of the amazing things and why she's so amazing is that it was, uh, it was just like second nature, wasn't there were that. I mean, I'm sure she adjusted to lots of things, um, but she, uh, nothing that I ever detected that she uh, 
was happy to make me, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, it was just easy. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and your kids, of course your kids, you know, that, uh, the oldest being three, but how, do, how does she respond? Does she already try and she she, help you? She, she definitely helps, but she doesn't really know why. Okay. I mean, she, I don't think she quite under, understands the concept yet. Yeah. We've talked about it a little bit, but um, she she's very helpful, the, the oldest one, so mm -hmm. she doesn't know why she's helping. But, yeah. like, she reads me books. Okay. That's awesome. So Yeah. But, that, man, that's, that's some time you'll never get back. You know, that's... Uh, uh, enjoy that. <laughs> enjoy yeah. that while you can, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I hope uh, you enjoy the egg, and I hope uh, you'll find yourself with your kids out here cooking. We will. I mean, it really is. I think it's it's one of those things where uh, we've talked about some technology that's improved our lives in the mm -hmm. past with, with the vision um, loss. I think this is one of those types of things that will uh, affect us. Yeah. A similar way as, as far as uh, changing what we do and, and how we operate. And it, it gives us more freedom. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you grilled before you lost your sight. Absolutely. And you kind of felt as though that was something that you wouldn't be able to do again for a while. Not easily. Not it, it was going to be something that was going to be, um, you know, more probably more difficult than it might have been worth. Mm -hmm. But you wanted to. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's... And that's what hopefully this is going to do for you. It's going to give you that independence. I know that well. Yeah. And uh, and that's the thing. You know what? I mean, if you have a message for others, because there's a lot of people, because I, I lost my sight younger than you, um, but it, mine was a gradual process. So it wasn't immediate. Um, so so there are some differences. And, and I think in your situation, looking back at what I went through, um, your situation is even more scary than, than anything that I had gone through as far as the loss of vision is concerned and how abruptly it, it happened and took place. But there are people all around this country and around the world that are going through similar things and, and feeling very mixed emotions on, on a lot of things. And if you could tell them, so there's something that you could encourage them with, um, you know, what, what would it be? Hmm. Uh, well, I just tell myself you got to keep going. You got to keep, just got to make it happen. And there is hope out there. You just got to keep looking in all the right places, and you never know what's around the next corner. Sometimes literally, right? Yeah. yeah. Visually, but um, generally, people want to help, and um, there's lots of people like that in the world. And um, you just got to keep asking the right questions and talking to the right people and doing the right things, and it'll work. What about accepting help? Has that been difficult? Yeah, it has been. Uh, and I think uh, even 20 years later for me, I still have some issues with that in certain certain situations. Um, but it is, I, I got to remind myself that you need help. everybody needs help, You're right. regardless That's of right. what your ability is. But yeah. uh, it just, you got to, uh, you don't want to let pride get in the way. Right, absolutely, and and pretty soon, you know, um, you're gonna have folks asking you uh, how to do something on the grill. You know, and I'm excited about that. That's right. It it'll happen. Yeah, it really will happen, and 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 they'll appreciate it. And and some will know you're visually impaired. Others won't. And and that's not what's gonna matter. The matter yeah, is. Yeah, that doesn't really matter. Yep. It, and uh, you're you're entering into a great community. Not just, I mean, the the egg community is a good one as a whole. But the barbecue community as a whole itself, has, I found to be uh, extremely encouraging, very, very big, very good, and you got a lot of people around you. We've got, you know, Premier Grilling, who's partnered with us for your egg, and, you know, just around the corner from you, and they're, they're ready to help, and uh, did a great job for us today, and uh, your brother, you got, there's some other folks here in this area that are ready to help you, and I'm sure you're going to find yourself helping a lot of other folks down the road as well yeah it's gonna be fun yeah absolutely man i appreciate it i appreciate you and and uh what you know your willingness to keep going and uh there are, i know there are struggles i know there's times but you know that you you still struggle with things as we all do but 
um, your your great evidence and, and inspiration and influence for others to to not quit, not give up. And so keep doing that, and we look forward to many cooks. Yeah, well, I'm really appreciative of, of you guys and what you're doing and, and your movement. And, um, I want to do anything I can to help it progress yeah. because uh, everybody should have this opportunity. Very good, man. Thanks a lot. You want to slide underneath that silver skin and, and follow that bone. Just try to slide that knife under that skin and just stay along the bone and sliding all the way down that one bone underneath that silver skin, if you can. The sound of victory. So you're right-handed, so grab your, with your right hand this olive oil. Now, just cup your left hand, just pour a little bit in your left hand, and then start rubbing those ribs down, and then turn them over and rub both sides. So, here is with your right hand, you can grab this seasoning, and I would put a pretty good liberal coat of seasoning on both those sets of ribs. Mainly the meat side, you put a lighter coat on the bone side, but then on the meat side, just really let her have it. Alexa, ask Flame Boss to change set temp to 300. There you go, man. <laughs> Professional. I love it. And then you can put your ribs bone side down. This is John Grimes. I'm here with uh, Peltzes, and I just got blindsided.